hard to deny results, and both of these teams have them. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ito, and tonight we're going to be dipping down into ESEA Maine to bring you an incredible playoffs match between Ryder Esports and Warfare. Both of these teams very highly seeded. Ryder Esports coming in in second place during the regular season, only beneath Cursed Ascension and Warfare. I believe we're seed number seven, and they had a... Pretty incredible season, both these teams here, and seeing it all start out on Inferno is, I think, going to be a real treat for us. I mean, talking about the history of these teams, I think it's important to mention Warfare has only played one playoffs match at the moment, I believe, and they won it 2-0. Pretty convincing. It was 16-11, 16-14, so they were close, but not too shabby. Hall's pop, pop probably in the works for this game. Ryder Esports, hard not to think of them as the favorites after their last playoff matches. But I think Warfare might have something in store for us here. Still playing it a little slow. Mills tossing out pieces of utility over at B, trying to drag something out, but he dies all the same here. Now that will be the catalyst for the push coming out from the side of Warfare GG, but they aren't ready for the double pit stack coming out from Ryder Esports. It's able to pick away. Eamon, rather, is able to pick away at a couple of players. The trades do come through eventually for Warfare, but they do kind of pale in comparison to what Ryder Esports were able to pull off in the pit. Now one on three with the three uh, members of the Primate group, all against Mello. It's a pretty tough ask, but he seems up for the challenge here. He's divided one fight over on by pistols otherwise, so it will be going the way of Ryder Esports for that first round. But at the same time, Warfare... They lost the player, had to make that push four versus five, and it was smart, though. I mean, I liked what Mills was doing. It, it just seemed like the only thing that could have really stopped that push was used by Ryder Esports. I'm talking about that double pit stack. It's rough, but, I mean, that's just how things eventually conclude. We'll see Warfare buying up into this one here. They did get the bomb down, so they can afford to invest a little bit more here. Still staying about that 2,000 mark. So it's nothing too crazy. But surely Ryder Esports will be able to clean this up one up without too much mess. Tossing down flashes and plenty of HEs to go around. Three players committed over at the B-bomb site here. And they're already pushing down Banana, Gorilla. If you were to go through the smoke, you would be, be in for a nasty surprise. There are pistols galore awaiting at T-ramp. As the map control is relatively non-existent for Warfare, they really look to, I guess, uh, stretch their legs out. See if they can get any map control for free. And possibly if they can overwhelm a couple of these Ryder Esports players. It's going to be tough, though. I mean, just based off the artillery alone. Only two players with armor on the side of Warfare. Hydra and Jonesy. And, well, I mean, they're both incredible players. Don't get me wrong. But I think everything would just pale in comparison to these M4s. That being said, since they bought them up, it's kind of a uh, large risk. That Ryder Esports are playing with here. Could come back to bite them here. Bo with first contact. Makes a little bit of noise, but it's Gorilla who really just <laughs> jimps out over at Banana. Picks up three with his MP9. That's a pretty gorgeous way to close out a round. It's only Jonesy in a one-on-four left. Uh, overall, I mean, I, I think this is basically what you would expect out of an eco round like this. Ryder Esports easily able to close things out versus the pistols. Jonesy trying to say otherwise. Can't even find number one as Ape try peeks right in towards Banana. Snuffs him out with a couple of bullets and it's quick 2-0. But Warfare GG nevertheless are going to be buying up and buying up fully into this one. Excuse me. Only one kill goes their way on the anti-eco. And that's totally fine. Number three probably will fare a little bit better for Warfare. Again, that early utility will come out from the CT side, and they're actually choosing to make this top banana their home. There's the aggro smoke towards the bottom banana again coming out, and the push is right behind it. So the same default is used yet again. We saw it last time. It seems to be a nice recipe for success. Mello will be watching for any pushes, but overall Warfare will just be setting up for what seems like an A hit. Although the defense is at the ready, Gorilla might already be rotating over to join the party at A. Indeed, knives out. Now Jonesy, entry fragging up here. And surprisingly, Mel is actually able to find the kill over towards Banana. Another one goes away of Mirth. 
this was looking very promising just because you looked at the rotations and you'd have to give the edge to Warfare, but surprisingly, or excuse me, uh, you had to have you would have to give the edge to Ryder for being prepared, but Warfare somehow opened it up with a double entry just like that and uh, suddenly find themselves in a very, very strong spot. Three on five. They can split this defense either which way that they'd want to. And they're expecting it to be an A hit. You see Gorilla has second thoughts about actually committing. Smoke's come through. He has the right call. But I'm not sure how much he's going to be able to get away with here. It's a nice 2k spray down. But it's traded out quickly. Now the rotates are on from Ryder. But they pale in numbers. Warfare outdo them just by the bodies alone. And Mirth might have a chance to body both players. Finds the first. And gets number two for triple in the round here. One plus two is three. Quick maths. Gonna have a little fun with it, Mirth. I know he was probably having a little bit of fun with that matchup over towards the bottom banana, especially when he could spray both of them down. But things stay solid. Ryder Esports will get punished for those M4s that they invested into the last round. Now on something pretty poor. They still go for that early banana aggression, but they don't have any utility behind it. In fact, they're gonna eat utility, if anything. Bow, dangerously low now. Only on 30 points. Just back up over towards CT. It's another round where if Warfare keep playing it like they have been previously, they should be totally okay. I mean, the only big weak spot I've noticed for Warfare was sometimes not checking for spots early. I'm thinking back to that uh, quick CT flank, you know, in Gorilla last round, who was able to find a double spray down before he was traded. In a perfect world, that wouldn't happen. And also on the pistol, where... Those players stuck up in pit were able to get away with quite a bit more than maybe Warfare would have ever wanted. But they're being very deliberate as they're pushing in towards a B-bomb site now. All setting up towards Banana. Nades at the ready and bombs slowly consolidating to join the party. No aggression from the CTs has come out as well. So Jonesy can just lurk, play anti-flash and get ready to push up. Indeed, smoke's come on through. Jonesy completely blinded up by his own teammates' flashes. It doesn't matter too much here because the defense is going to be paper thin. But this paper actually seems to be cutting them. And at least cuts Jonesy down. Three remain for the side now of Ryder Esports. All equipped with pistols. No upgrade guns. Nothing. Their chances of winning this round are slim to none with no kits in play, and I think at this point they can just be perfectly happy with saving the armor that they invested into this one here. It's a decent enough amount of money that they spent, too. Ape and Chimp, that's a thousand bucks a piece just on their bodies, not to mention the pistols. But they're trying to get a little bit more where they can here. Mirth easily snuffs out. Chimp might be able to get Ape as well for his time. I don't even think Amen will be able to get one. I'm in. Whew, okay, maybe he is. He's going to go up in flames, but at least he's able to cause some good damage on his way out. Yo, what's up, Chuck? How you doing? Casting is going well. It's uh, the only thing keeping me afloat during these fun quarantine times. It's not the worst damage in the world for Ryder Esports on their save round. It's not anything incredible. They don't win the round, but three guns out of the hands of Warfare is pretty decent, I have to say. Sure, nothing on that side was saved, but the CTs can uh, at least go home knowing that they caused a little bit of economic turmoil. Interesting for one stack and play from the CTs as well, as they are, again, pretty lightly equipped to deal with the <laughs> warfare problem, but hell, a shot like that helps. Gorgeous one-tap, or excuse me, a gorgeous one-tap on Jonesy easily removes him from the round. At the ready, AWP. Keep in mind, now look at this. The defense have brought over another player to join at B. It's Ape with a scout. They might not be ready, too, because Mello now knows that one player at least has a CZ at B, so he might feel a little bit more confident taking these fights. And speaking of confidence during fights, Chimp easily punishes down Mirth for trying to aggress out Balcony a bit too much, and he ends up getting his head bitten right off. Starting to get a little bit worrying now. If Mills doesn't convert this kill, things get even scarier. Luckily, he does secure that much-needed kill. And he might be able to consolidate into his second one onto Ape as well. Scout 
Mills, although he's making a lot of noise, might have a chance at it. No, Ape is just too quick on the trigger. It will eventually make its way down into two versus two. It's still anybody's round, anybody's game at this point. Now Rider Esports have to be quick on the rotate here. Warfare, smart enough to try to bring those rotations out. They know that the CTs are going to be well on their way over to the site. There's no util between the two players as well. And Warfare are looking very clean to close this one out now. There's not a lot on the side of Ryder Esports here. That does help their case, getting a tag on Hydric, but that Molotov just buys so much time for them. The Scout and the AK in play. Hydric is going to be on borrowed time, but Melo is most likely going to be the player to watch in this sort of scenario here. Actually, Hydric is going to be able to deliver with one, and Melo with the second, so the crossfire is perfectly in tune with success for Warfare. As they tune in for a lovely third round, they continue to look... Solid. Uh, I mean, I say solid with kind of a, a bit of an asterisk. There were a little bit of worrying prospects going down to a 3 versus 5 super early on versus the pi those pistols. It's a bit scary to go up against, but they managed to deal with it quickly. You know, wrap over towards the B-bomb site and have those rotates left wondering what went wrong. Graze, uh, this is Warfare's map pick. Should be at the, the top of the screen and well if you also look at the top of your screen you might see that three turn to a four in just a matter of seconds because Jonesy and Mirth both find first kills towards the A bomb site and Ryder <laughs> I don't even have time to look at the chat for two seconds and Warfare have already extended their lead that is impressive <laughs> I gotta say I mean Warfare this was their map pick as Afer mentioned they are looking pretty confident on it early on in this game that being said, it is also important to remember Ryder. There are no slouches. I mean, again, they're a second seed in this season for a reason. They finished 12-3, uh, and three, I believe it was, or 13-2. and two. Or, No, sorry, 13-3, uh, and three, I believe it was. Either way, they had a pretty good run of form, and they're continuing it into playoffs. They faced against Supremacy Gaming last. They won that 2-1. to one. Only map they dropped was Vertigo, which they lost 19-17. Other two were complete stops. Guess what I'm really trying to say is uh, it's too early to call Ryder out of this one here. Don't underestimate Warfare, says Vengeance. And that was actually going to be my second point. Warfare are very scary. I've had the personal chance to play against Mills and Jonesy on the side of Warfare. And they're insane players. Hey, what's up, Tazix? How you doing? Tazix is also another player who's had the wonderful opportunity of playing with Jonesy in Mills, so he can attest to it. Fun fact, Ryder Esports only has two losses. One of them was Warfare. Is that true? I actually didn't know that. I thought they lost to... I know they lost to West Coast Waifus, and then they lost to the team team. I thought they lost to someone else, and holy, that is a duel that is lost by Jonesy. Unfortunately caught out towards the top of Banana. Although, the wound is stemmed just a little bit by a bit of retur return spray. There's still a man down, Warfare. It becomes a little bit more difficult for them to deal with this next gun round. We saw how they dealt with a 3v5 last time. It's not the end of the line for them just yet. Melo is just trying to pull off a fake A execute. And actually, that fake, yeah. You look at that, you see the CT seems a little bit concerned about actually staying, is in that rotator position. Now Rap is coming through. This is huge from Warfare. I absolutely love it. Gorilla could easily stomp it out, though, with a couple of bullets. And although Amen, or Iman, I'm not really sure which one that's supposed to be, completely honest. He's able to spot another player. A gauntlet of kills goes the way of Ryder, and I think they should be able to close this one out. I have to say, I like the mid-round call from Warfare, but the shots just really weren't connecting how they needed to. And the CTs will get awarded with number three. Warfare did beat them in regular season. I didn't see that. I might have just, like, misread their record or something like that. But hey, that sh I mean, that says a lot, doesn't it? Warfare being one of the only players to knock Ryder Esports down a peg. We'll look to continue that same storyline. Both teams being able to fully invest, so that's not the worry. And actually, money is starting to look a little bit more decent now for Ryder. If they lose it, I mean, if they lose this coming round, I should say,
things won't look as promising, but being able to keep those AKs from the previous round really, really helped their case for buying more M4s. Quick A wrap. They've completely given up banana control in this round here, Warfare. Ave early on with a kill. Doesn't seem to care about where the map control is. He'll make it happen wherever he can. He continues with a second. Amen. Amen. What is it supposed to be? Can someone just tell me? Is it Amen or Amen? I have no clue. All I know is that he's eventually going to be dead in the water. Good little shot out from Mills. Finds himself now in a one on four, down from that one on five. Amen. It's Amen? All right, cool. Thank you. I <laughs> want to be sure. I mess up so many aliases. I don't think you understand how bad Sixy was for me to find out. CXCI. Who names himself that? Mills. Maybe if he can fight this first fight, he has a chance, but not quite the possible, or the possibility doesn't exactly come to life for him. And uh, nor does the round. It's all evened up early on. I think the money still has potential for Warfare, but it seems, at least judging by the scoreboard at the moment, that they're going to be cutting a couple of corners. MAC-10s, even a Tech-9 on Mirth here. Otherwise, AK. So, Warfare, it's a bit of a gamble by that they're going for, but they're hoping to hit Jackpot. Now quickly going up towards A. You see a rotate is already in the works here. And A-Man is going to be able to find a double kill before he's eventually going to be sprayed down by Hydric in response. Now A backing up into Bit as well. Has a player at the ready. Nice little shot from Hydric. Actually finds his team an opportunity onto the site. Gets bombed down as well. Now it's a three on two off the back of Hydric's, in Hydric's insane play. Bo and Gorilla none the wiser on onto where Mello is. Eventually finds... Gorilla all by his lonesome. And this is very difficult now. Honestly, it, it, it's a very quick and dirty round from Warfare, but Hydric being able to immediately dome down three players just like that was... I mean, it's game-changing, honestly. Shots like that. Ryder, it's not like they had a particularly bad defense on A. It's just that they're all tapped down. It's pretty unbelievable. The money... Is actually pretty solid from Ryder. Uh, they don't even need to save this rifle if Gorilla wanted to go for some crazy play, but he wants to keep the AK-47. Yeah, is our player to watch for the side of Ryder Esports heading into this game, so maybe he's going to try to tap a couple of heads down. And that's what's important to mention as well. Again, since the money has been pretty kind for Ryder Esports so far, they're going to be able to buy for a couple of rounds down the line. Hell, if they ration it well enough and they get lucky enough, they could buy for the rest of this half, in theory. But we're not thinking theoreticals here. Trying to think what can actually work out for them. Warfare, that quick and dirty play, again, just did so much work for them. Netted them around in just 30 seconds of time, it felt like. This time, they slowed down the pace a little bit more, wanting it to be a bit of a slow burn. Amen. I believe did spot or hear a player. Over towards apartment, so he keeps his gaze at the ready. He's at a very strong position, dancing behind this pillar. He can avoid flashbangs left and right. Center, if he wanted. The bomb rotates over towards the ladder site instead. Mills has snuck his way past the smoke into a bit of a sneaky position. You might see them actually double back, go over towards A if they so felt like it. But Ryder is not going to be fully ready for this B push. Their players are split between A and B, and the B side is a little bit more lackluster in comparison. Smoke's flashes come through. A will be quick on the rotate, sure, but they all pale in comparison to what someone like Bo could do. Great shots come through, but he's only able to find one while completely blinded. A 4-on-4 four four is a very nice look for Warfare because they get the bomb down. They have been really solid in these post plants so far, and they also have a bit of utility to boot. Triple kits in play from Ryder Esports makes this within the realm of possibility. But at what point do they decide to actually commit to the save? Because the kills aren't going their way, at least with Mills so far. Abe extending his lead for a little bit more. It's actually Chimp to take down the kill. But Mills is striking back with a vengeance. Gets a double. And they're still going for this Ryder Esports here, but they haven't dealt with all the factors in this game. It's Mello, Left Alive versus Chimp. Toss out the Molotov all you want, but Chimp, you're going to be going up in flames either way here. Ten points of health, and it's going to be number six for Warfare. That was so, so much better. I mean, Ryder, 
I gotta say, they're taking that a little bit slow towards the beginning of that retake here, just trying to get all hands on deck. <laughs> Reflect says that was awkward, lol. It was a little bit awkward, yeah, but in all honesty, I just felt like it was really well played by Melo. Hiding in that corner, I think uh, just the wrong callouts or something came through, and the CTs just had a really hard time dealing with it. There's almost nothing that the CTs could do at that point to really win it. Um, when it came down to that one versus one, just because the time was so heavily in favor of warfare at that point. Yeah, are strong in these post plants. Again, lots of damage is done to warfare though, so they're not out of the woods. Warfare. Want to keep it up so they can get that economical advantage as they continue down the line over towards A quickly. Brackets has been secured. Now, now they'll now look to uh, maybe bring it a little bit further. They've made it their home. Flashes in response from Ryder. Don't do much of anything. Maybe just buy them a bit of time, but the Rotates have already made their way in perfectly on through. They've burrowed themselves up in pit and up towards Moto. And the Moto player doesn't have a chance in hell to make it work. However, Ape kind of does. He only gets one kill, unfortunately, but Chimp still lurks in the smoke over towards pit. Looks away at just the wrong time, and it's another A site cracked wide open, and it's another round. Surely on the books for Warfare, because Ryder, they have to make this a two versus three, and the A site, look, while I feel like we see some of the craziest clutches on this map, I think this is a bit too tall of an order for them to actually try to make a retake work. Bow, ready towards Balcony, completely flashed, somehow takes down Hydric. That is a gorgeous way to start things off, Fearn. Maybe I did speak too soon. Mello will try to convince me otherwise. Spots exactly where Gorilla is here, and Gorilla goes for something a bit too crazy, and it works out just in the nick of time. Somehow we'll defuse the bomb, and it looks like I did speak too soon. Unfortunately, the shot doesn't connect, and Ryder will steal that one away, two versus three. Ah, uh, that is a bit of the rougher, or a bit on the rougher side, I gotta say. Warfare. Um, don't quite close that one out. I think it all started with Bo hitting that pretty gorgeous shot, completely blinded up to Hydric. If that didn't work out, I mean, the numbers game could have again come into play for Warfare. Both teams very weak economically. This is a pretty important round to decide the rest of the half. Just when you look at the... Uh, Artillery head to head, you have to give the edge slightly to Ryder, just because you only have one Famas in comparison to the two Galils. But math like that doesn't exactly seem to be convincing a lot of the time. Bo was playing kind of a one and done angle, has even a flash at the ready here, completely turned away. Warfare start pushing in, but they aren't ready for the first member. The second member, maybe they're slightly more ready for, but Gorilla is still able to capitalize on that flash. Now another player has rotated through coffins, and it's Ape who actually goes absolutely Ape, finds a double somehow. And it's a quick burst of action followed by a period of slowness. But Mills is trying to minimize that period of slowness. How did that shot not connect? He has an AWP and he's against two members. Great shot on the first. There's one more player remaining. It's Chimp. He'll have another chance at making this one versus two clutch possible. Chimp hears it. He'll back off. Knows that a push might be a little bit expected. And he's right. He's perfectly right. In fact, Mills... Adventuring through the smoke has no clue on where Chimp could possibly be. He's going to try to play it slow. Maybe get Chimp to think that could be over towards A. But time is not in his favor. And nor, th nor is the peak. Chimp is ready, steady, and able to hit the shot. And I said that that was an important round when it comes to deciding the economy for the rest of this half. And you'll see it start becoming absolutely monumental from about here on out. Ryder will be able to procure another very strong buy. Actually even get a max seven on bow. <laughs> Just trying to build up a little bit more cash in their pockets. But Warfare, they're stuck on pistols. They're gonna bring it towards A very quickly, but this should be just easy pickings for Amen. I don't even see him getting caught off guard or overwhelmed by these pistols whatsoever. Chimp finding two before he is eventually fallen victim to the P250 Glock train. <laughs> nice little shots from Ape. Makes it a double for him as well. Another expected result, though, in that case. Just kind of the cleanup game for the CTs. I mean, realistically, what can you hope for in a round like that other than maybe just trying to get bombed down? 
secure an even better buy for yourself, but still, they make it relatively decent. I mean, three AKs, a Krieg, and a Galil. That's not bad. Jonesy will take the Galil instead of uh, getting an AK, no util. Great shot. Great flash from Mills. That finds Bo out completely off guard. Sure, he was the most lackluster equipped on the side of Ryder. But still, that body being put into a bag really means a lot. Oh my god, they have a check for Chip! What a crazy shot from Hydric, though. Although the uh, kill is refragged at the end of the day. It's a pretty nice shot to start things off as the site is stormed yet again. And Warfare are right back to square one within striking distance and ready to even things up. Now four on two. Make it a four on one. This retake had legs last time, Ryder. This time it doesn't seem to be the case. Warfare are trained. They have learned from the last time with that awkward exchange on the A-bomb site. And they'll force Gorilla to just keep that M4 for the final day, the final round of this first half of this best of three series. There's still plenty of more Counter-Strike to be played, don't get me wrong. But I think uh, the sun may rise on a different map, <laughs> on a different half. Ryder, I mean, talk about a competitive half. I got to say, you can't really get more neck and neck than this. On paper, yeah, the CT half is more favored, but it has been pretty smooth sailing for, or not smooth sailing, it has been a pretty impressive game on both fronts, I feel like. Both teams are stepping up, and we're seeing interesting things come out. Ryder Esports, they haven't really had to change the playbook all too much. Last one of the half coming through. It's all evened up on Inferno. First of our potential best of three. Or of our potential three. Oh my god, they didn't check for him over towards Sandbags. Bo, he's able to get one. I thought he was dead to rights for sure. Maybe Gorilla can do a little bit better. Gets one, gets a second. Not quite, not quite the second, but the spray through smoke over towards CT will basically net them a chance at getting a second. A man down as Warfare take over the B-bomb site very, very quick. How does Mills do that? What? <sighs> that is unbelievable. Well, Mills takes the words right out of my mouth and somehow just domes someone right through the smoke. Mirth can't quite pull off his best Mills impression through the fire. Mills will try to impress me once more. Now a one versus two for him to win. Great shot on the bomb and the spray through the smoke gives away the position of Chimp. He knows exactly where the lineup is for that smoke as well. So Chimp has to be a little bit worried here. Caps it once here. Mills, oh, he's a little bit off here. I think he's just about done. It's 8-7. A smoke diffuse marks the end of the half. It's an unfortunate way to close it out. But I gotta say... I think it's a perfect summary to how this first half has been going. It's close until the bitter end. Nils nearly pulling off that one versus three. It's an unfortunate way to lose the round, but again, they're, it's still a relatively even game. 8-7. Considering that the Warfare got seven on the T half of Inferno, it's not too shabby. They can make this work if they have even a remotely decent CT side. But of course, same goes for Ryder. They only need eight of their own on the T-half to close it out in regulation. So, again, to, uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it's still anybody's game. Small little break before we head into half. Oh my god, I need some water. <laughs> hmm. There we are. I recommend drinking water, everybody, because... Having to speak on a dry throat is not a good idea. <clears throat> anyway, short break before we head to the second half of this game. Players probably just uh, you know, going to the bathroom and stuff. Graze asks, why did he go for the other gun? Did he not reload his gun? I, I think he just, like, in theory, wanted to be able to spray down that bomb angle quicker. But I think he just kind of fluffed up. And uh, he, he was, like, trying to juggle the guns back and forth. Maybe, like, give himself a shot at, like a faster than reloading sort of pace, but I think he just kind of messed it up or something. That's at least what it seemed like for my my POV. I want to actually take a quick look at the stats as well. 
Gonna have a very, very brief chat with uh, Jonesy before this match began on a uh, you know why they picked Overpass or uh, Inferno rather. And uh, well, basically what I was getting from that vibe is that they just felt comfortable on it. They didn't play it from what I see at all during the regular season, but they did it in playoffs versus Steel Series, which they managed to beat them 16-11, and also versus Magic School Bus, where they also beat them 16-11. So they've had a decent track record on it in playoffs so far. I don't actually see how they did on Mirage as well. You know what? We're just going to be doing plenty of research during this potentially long halftime break. I did manage to follow one of the Warfare matches during the regular season where they absolutely crushed a team on Mirage. Trying to see if I... Yes, I think it was Toyota Racing Department. Great name. But uh, it was absolute savagery, to be completely honest. So I think both of these... I mean, all three of these maps can really favor <laughs> either team. It's, it's so hard to really make a accurate estimate on how both these teams can do because there's not like a lot of available information that you could see compared to a team like Astralis or something. Um, they're just kind of be going off of like what regular season results were like and hell even how scrims are going. There's a lot of potential if ands or buts and uh, well Ryder Esports they don't want to be placed on their butts on this first pistol. We're right back into the second half. Warfare GG versus Ryder Esports now switching sides, Ryder are playing this extremely slow before they contact up towards Banana. They still have Ape waiting towards T-Apps. I think they're just going to be setting up for a nice little B execute. Three players from Warfare already primed and ready to deal with any potential terrorist to overwhelm or to overwhelm them. Mills with a kit. Will have to be one of the first to rotate here, but he's going to be the last one to the party here. Meanwhile, Ryder will just start pushing right into the bomb site here. Mello will have to hit a nice couple of shots here, but unfortunately he's only able to find one. Hydric, same story with him, only one to his name. Now, bomb gets planted. Ryder can play it from here, and it's looking a lot like how Warfare managed to deal with this on their gun rounds. They have a smoke in play. They can smoke over towards Banana. And that makes things a little bit easier for them, especially if they went for that grill plant. Ape doesn't want to fall victim to the smoke, but it's a trade back and forth. Jonesy actually gets another one. He'll have to pull out the second in the round and win it for his team, but it goes again to the very bitter end. And this time, it's extra bitter. They lose it, Jonesy, to Gorilla. The two players to watch facing off head-to-head -head has Gorilla reigning supreme at the end of the day. So, 7-9 to nine it will be for Ryder. They continue their momentum that they finished off the CT half with into the aggressor side. But Warfare aren't done yet. They're investing into this one as well. Scouts, Zeke's, and even an MP9 bought up. They really have a decent chance at making this work here as well. If they manage to take advantage of some of these off angles. You saw it work out for Ryder. I mean, there's definitely the possibility. Okay, I think Amen and Hydric are just doing a little dance. They just don't realize it. Look at that. They're both jiggle peeking each other. <laughs> That's kind of cute. That nade is kind of cute. Holy hell, Ryder. That is something a little bit gross. Now Mello and Jonesy heavily tagged up here. They're going to be a little less ready to hold down the B-bomb site. Which is not exactly good news, too, because I think Ryder are just about ready to start taking it over. Smoke's through. Mills will be the first to make his way to the site as well, and even he is tagged up. This eco round is going anything but smoothly for the side of Warfare at the moment here. And uh, just about as perfect as he can get for Ryder. But they haven't gotten the kills just yet. That's where things can go from good to bad in the matter of seconds. Jonesy gets one little nice kill, but that is pretty much all that his team can end up muttering. Now a two on four. A couple of players lit up for Ryder Esports and uh, there's almost no shot at this one actually consolidating into anything more than just a couple of uh, guns taken down. Jeez, high jerk. Nice little shot on the chimp as well. Worth perfectly content just saving that MP9. We'll leave Hydric to his own devices. Picking up the scout and bailing with it. Overall, I mean, the full investment 
not too promising. Rioter Esports are able, easily able to run over that B bomb site, get the bomb down, and play it from there. There's no Deagle Heroics or anything of the sort. It's just a relatively clean round under the belt for Rider. So they make their way to 9, or onto 10, excuse me. So double digits has been acquired. The save coming through for Warfare. This just might be 7 to 11 as well. Everyone's favorite convenience store might be a very convenient, convenient score for Ryder Esports. At that point, I mean, they're only five away from closing it out, stealing the map pick away from Warfare. Jesus Christ, Mills! I didn't think he was going to be able to. He was going to be given that opportunity time and time again, but look at me and Bobo the Clown in this situation. He somehow snatches away the head of Chimp. That's a good start for Warfare, but still hard to really give them the uh, benefit of the doubt in them winning this round. They're still down so much artillery in comparison to the AKs and Kriegs of Ryder. That number of four versus five is a very nice way to start. But I'm just not sure if they can finish up what they started. So choosing to play it very, very slow. Both teams here not even bothering to really make that much contact here. Hydra could be in for a nasty surprise, though, when he starts jiggle peeking mid a little bit more aggressively. Spots the Krieg. Gets a nice little headshot for his troubles. But it's traded out just as quickly. Now Rotates will be desperately their way through, or desperately making their way through towards the A bomb site here. But Ryder continue to play it slow. They know now that at least one CT has decided to rotate over to join the party, but he's already taken down. Jonesy, no chance of life. Now possibly a CT wrap? No, Ryder, they're going to take it. A nice little A wrap. Bring it arch side up towards the site itself here. Murph, no chance either. And this is a little bit more of what I was worried about. It's a two on two. Soon to be a two on one here because Mills is basically on life support at the, mi at the moment. Oh, but hello there. Mello finds the first ape. Might not have a chance. I cannot believe I'm just saying it, but Warfare somehow steal that one away. That is unbelievable. I, I mean, honestly, considering how some of those gunfights were going for a decent amount of time, I had not a lot of hope. I mean, once I saw Jonesy get dinked down immediately, as soon as he just existed... I thought Mello, okay, maybe maybe he gets the first, but the second, no. <laughs> Again, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised, I guess. A very surprising eco victory for Warfare. Puts him on eight, so again, within striking distance of Ryder, maybe this run won't be as easy as they would have hoped. A conga line of terrorists makes their way over towards B, and Mello... Although that Molotov doesn't hit, I think it was probably going to be a little bit wiser. Might actually have a little bit more value than you would have normally. Because now Ryder Esports are all stuck up towards the top of Banana. Stuck between smokes as well. It becomes a little bit more difficult for them to prod this B site how they might have possibly wished. Especially with three players soon to be at the ready. Mills in a very, very nice rotation spot. Can really dedicate towards either site. Ryder haven't exactly pulled off many fakes just yet in this game. This actually might be a really opportune time for them to do it. Bo, lacking behind the rest of his teammates, probably will just toss out a couple pieces of utility to bait of CT over. And indeed, it has worked to a charm. Mills joins the empty party room over at A. He's starting to soon realize things are going wrong, so again, he'll be first face the first new face at the B-bomb site, but it really is going to be heavily on Mello and Jonesy to hold this one down. Still playing it slow. Ryder Esports waiting until that 35-second mark to actually start making their move here. Mello, with a Krieg in hand, does not even have a chance to make that one work here. Jonesy only able to get one as well. It's overwhelming, the offense from Ryder Esports, as they're able to get away with the kills. And hell, they're even doing better. Amen. Makes you pray to a god that you don't die as well, but Hydric might not be so lucky. Down to 61, Bow pushing through the smoke at CT. Somehow, Hydric falls victim. This round is starting to look very devastating now. 
it was promising for a decent amount of time for warfare. I mean, if that creek was able to pop off, it had a real decent opportunity to cause some damage and hold down the T's, but it's just not meant to be. And Gorilla even with a little PM at the end of the day. Oh, he goes up to the bomb. Well, I guess uh, revenge is sweet. Now it's 8 to 11, so both teams able to get one back and forth. So the money stays about the same. Although Warfare will be able to not exactly buy up into this one here. They still seem dedicated to the cause. Earth poking his face out over towards mid while the rest of his teammates stack up towards the top of Banana. And they'll just aggress on it. Ryder Esports, very decent read on the situation. Are just going to storm over the site. Bring it over towards B, perhaps? Oh my god, this is a clown fiesta. <laughs> They're just taking it all the way over towards B. Ryder Esports. They have free domain over Inferno. It's like the first time you're looking at a map after a new release and you're like, okay, this is where they changed everything. It's uh, just pretty much going to be a whitewash from here on out, I'm pretty sure. You'll just get to see some uh, pistol DM versus rifle DM at this point. A man and ape. And uh, Gorilla. Also chime in for cra all chime in for frags. And, uh, well... That was not the most promising of Ecos, wasn't it? <laughs> it was just pretty unfortunate from start to finish. I mean, Ryder had a good read on, I guess, what Warfare were attempting. It looks a little bit silly from the third person. But who knows what the calls were like. Now, there are guns in play, and this is where the real uh, big heavy moments can start coming through. Mills, impressing me as always, takes down Bo to start things off on a good note. Now playing a man down very early on into this one here. Ryder, while they will have definitely a lot of time to think about where to take this one, it's already not looking very nice. Mills, unfortunately, isn't, isn't even refracked as well. He's only tagged down just a slight bit. But when you're against four Kriegs, or three Kriegs and an AK, rather, you're going to die in one shot pretty much anyway, so I don't think the TCK really matters all too much in this kind of situation. See, oh, potential boost actually coming out from Warfare, but they seem to decide against it. A very dry peek in from both sides. Mellow reigns supreme in that duel. Makes things even sweeter of a deal for ri or for uh, Warfare now. And now, I mean, the T's have to just be kind of stuck twiddling their thumbs at the moment, trying to figure out. What can we even do? How can we salvage this round? At this point, they're going to have to get lucky with rotations because they're only three men strong. And pretty much the only noteworthy thing going for them is that they have plenty of utility to go around. They could set up for a full execute onto the B-bomb site. Two smokes at the ready and plenty of flashes, even Molotov. So it's not the end of the world. It's possible in theory, but it's not looking very promising, is it? Especially when Mello, Jonesy, both able to find kills like that becomes infinitely more difficult, and the time doesn't exactly help their case either. Chimp against four. Nice little spray through the smoke. Tries to kill Mills. But you cannot kill Mills. Because Mills will have his teammate kill you. It's pretty nice. I mean, very solid victory at the end of the day from that one. Warfare even picking up a Krieg. Now they have two in their arsenal. Mello is the only one who really has to cut corners. Picking up a UMP instead of the ever-desired M4s or Kriegs or even an AWP. And speaking of AWP, that's a nice way for Ape to make his name known with the sniper. Takes down Mills immediately, who is probably the opening hero of last round. This time seems to be the opening victim. Mello strikes right back, though, with a kill of his own. That one's on to bow, and in fact, that's a free gun upgrade, upgrade just waiting for you, Mello. Take it, take the money, and run. Now we're on even footing yet again. Money fully invested for Ryder Esports. They want to make this one work here. They have to deal with Hydra, who's able to only find one kill. Now Mirth lurks over towards Graveyard, finds a kill. Oh, but he mollies himself off. But it doesn't matter. He still stays alive through it, and he's able to do absolutely amazing despite mauling himself off. He delivers with two. A third actually might be on the cards as well. Ape runs into the nade, and it's finished up by Jonesy. <laughs> Pow says, Mirth's so nervous. That was a actually 10,000 IQ Molotov tossed out by Mirth. 
It Molotoved off the entrance so he couldn't be pushed, obviously. <laughs> I gotta say, though, Mirth has really good taste in icons. The That, that character in her icon, or his icon, rather. Best character in Dagajikashi. <coughs> anyway, now Pistol's on the board for Ryder. We'll just try to close the distance over towards B, but Molotovs will be their welcoming mats. Hey, Charlie, what's up? I didn't know you were watching. You caught me weebing out. This is another kind of situation where it should be an easy cleanup for Warfare. Like, this is probably the best time for them to start building up a little bit more of their econ. It's been kind of a, a bit dramatic this half. I mean, again, think about the last round where Mello was stuck on a UMP. He actually ended up really being one of the heroes of that round, but I mean, I'm sure he would most likely enjoy an AK over uh, SMG like that. Oh, Bo, I like this. Look at this. A rotation has been dragged over from CT. Bo's buying so much time here. Molly at the ready. Mello at the ready as well. And the pistols are not quite ready, but they're actually delivering perfectly. Chimp somehow with a double. I'm caught off guard time and time again, and it looks like the CTs are as well. Warfare will have to make a retake work into the B bomb site here. Completely blinded up. Hydric it seems a little bit interesting to watch, but he does convert the kill. Ape has a chance to go absolutely massive, but he's only able to find one. The second is not quite there. Now two versus one remains for Chimp to win. Finds the first one here, but the trade out again is perfectly in style. Jonesy, I mean, I gotta say, he's usually the last one left standing. Sure, he's tied for the bottom fragger on his team at the moment, but he's been getting a lot of these finishing kills and been a very strong linchpin, I gotta say. It's neck and neck yet again. Ryder definitely getting more than they pos possibly could have ask asked for. Jeez, talking is hard. Probably need to drink water. That would actually help. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm so afraid to drink water during cast because I'm just worried that, like, it'll sound too loud. But hey, doesn't matter. This ain't about me. It's about Ryder and Warfare, both of which will be buying up into this one. Spam towards the bottom of Banana. Otherwise, Ryder, I mean, their map control isn't exactly very strong right now. Another smoke actually goes down, down towards the bottom of Banana. That changes things up considerably. It's something that Ryder would doing, were doing a ton when they're on the CT side. So uh, perhaps you know, poetic justice for them to do it right back to him. Very strong A-hold in the works from Warfare as well. This could, I can swing either way. I mean, Ryder have been really good about finding these opening kills. I don't exactly favor them still. Metal is playing B about as safely as you could possibly hope for. Bit of a missed bottom banana smoke, but it still does the job. Money is absolutely a factor here as well. It's important to mention. Whoever loses this will probably be in the tank for a round or two. Ryder will have that full loss bonus coming through though, which makes things a little bit better, but this is a pretty important round for Warfare to win, especially if they can do it convincingly. Mills will try to be the first face to do it all, but he only gets attacked before he is basically put out of the round, relegated to site duty, and it's actually Jonesy to step up to the plate when it all matters most here. This site is being absolutely shut down. Warfare, what the hell was that hold? Jonesy, what the hell was that hold? That was absolutely gorgeous. A flurry of kills in just the matter of seconds. I said Warfare needed to win that, win that round convincingly, and my god, they convinced me that they know exactly what's going on. It's all even up 12 to 12, Ryder Esports. Again, we'll be stuck on pistols. They have made this an incredibly competitive game so far, and they pulled off some magic last eco. Let's see if they can repeat the magic here. Mello. Gets taken down almost immediately to start things off on a really sour note for for Warfare, excuse me. And it hurts. Warfare, I mean, giving up that early frag against pistols makes things so much more difficult. Still definitely winnable. I mean, for decent reason. You can just look at the left and right 
sides of your screen to show exactly why. I don't need to even really make a strong argument of why this is so winnable from Warfare. But Ryder, at the same time, I mean, they make a convincing case for themselves as well. They are pretty damn strong on these pistols. They'll be looking to go for a Hall's Pop. Mirth is perfectly ready, well equipped for the occasion. And he will fail to actually only find three players. And I, I mean, it's hard to even say what's going on at this point. I thought he was going to be able to find a little bit more than the three. Somehow, it's kind of a three and done. His teammate doesn't even steal the action from him. I fumble over my words, but Ryder fumble into this round, possibly. This would be such a devastating way for Warfare to lose this one. But Jonesy and Mills, the two AZ duo, or the AZ duo here, do not want to make that a possibility. It's Chimp versus Mills now, and oh, the USP somehow wins it out. That's incredible here. Is there time on the clock, though? It's a completely different question, but I think the answer to that question is yes. Warfare, somehow with 13, who else would you want in a situation like that other than Mills and Jonesy? The Arizona duo makes my state proud. And they continue with another round. 13 to their name. They have taken the lead versus Ryder on the CT side of Inferno. And Ryder is starting to run out of chances to make this game work. Again, they've been really convincing on pistols. Both times we saw it, they found four kills plus a bomb plant. If they can do that same thing with guns, they could find themselves in a very strong position. Now, a Raptor CT comes through. Mills is already at the ready, though. He's only able to find one. Surprisingly, that second doesn't quite connect. But Hydric is right there to pick up the slack in comparison. Or in return, rather. Unfortunately, it seems to be an uh, order too tall. Now, Mirth will have to hold down the A-bomb site this time. All by his lonesome. The shots don't connect. And, I mean, hey, this is what Ryder needed to do to really strike back quickly. And it's working out to an absolute T for them. This hurts too. Again, the money is dismal for Warfare. They just have to save these rifles. It's pretty much impossible to justify going for a 2v4 like this. Just because, again, whenever Ryder have been on these rounds, they have kept these rounds close, competitive, and gotten the CTs down to pretty unfavorable numbers. Again, sometimes, yeah, they win it out. They actually get the, the big number at the top of your screen, but... They seem to falter when it comes to keeping the players alive, keeping the guns alive, and... Now, it will come back to bite them. <laughs> Ooh, that actually helps their case a little bit more, though. Two kills damages, damages the economy a bit more of Ryder. Again, all evened up 13 to 13 as we enter number 27. Warfare will be able to piece together one more solid buy. Off the back of those double kills from Mello, which I gotta say really helped their case. This one is for all the marbles, though. It's not quite within that economy breaking point for Ryder if they lose this one here, but I'm sure at the same time this is a pretty important round for them to win. They don't get off to a great start with Amen immediately tagged out. And Chimp nearly the same story. He's bleeding internally. 53 points of health and a man down is not a good start for Ryder. I can say that for sure. But it's all about how Warfare try to take these rotations from here. They very early on seem to enjoy rotating players to and fro each site. Mills, interestingly enough, who was in the rotator position before, this time seems to be a dedicated anchor over towards B. Boosting his teammate up. It's actually Jonesy stepping up to be the rotator this time. For Ryder, I mean, B has been a pretty friendly site for them. In theory, I think it would be the best bet for them. Not sure if exactly they uh, feel the same as me. But I think it could work out just fine for them. Plus, the setup seems to favor it as well. They'll need to be a quicker rotate in place, though. There's only two players ready at the speed bomb site here. Smoke flashes... All have gone down from Ryder. 
And now it's just going to be a matter of actually hitting the shots. The rotates indeed are coming through, but the T's are going to be right behind them, right in front of them. And surprisingly, that boost on Flower Pot works to an absolute charm. Mellow finding two before he's traded out. Mills even gets a tag up on Bo as he's getting the bomb planted. A two versus four for a post plant begins. And Bo, if he doesn't watch Banana absolutely perfectly, we could see this quickly be the end of the line. Warfare can afford to play this a little bit slow here. Oh, maybe they don't even have to. They get all the kills. It's done already. We're going to 14. Just when things were looking a little bit scary for a second. Incredible solo efforts and honestly fantastic CT con consolidation on the retake there. Makes it so Warfare are able to get number 14. Even if those kills, those like initial kills that we saw on the post plant didn't go the way of Warfare, there was still that banana uh, player, Mirth, at the ready. Like, I mean, there is a lot that is looking promising for Warfare at the moment here. Again, though, Ryder, not to be worn out, will choose to buy up yet again here. They have rifles, a lot of them to go around for absolutely everybody here. That is a gorgeous need from, I, I don't even know who it was, but whoever it was, you're making me feel things that I sh shouldn't feel. Oh, Hydric, I believe it was. Oh my god, are they actually boosting up on top of Porch? What the hell is this? Oh my god, Eamon has boosted up on top of Porch. This is one of my favorite plays to do on the T offense here, and it works to an absolute charm yet again. Amen. It makes me start praying. Finds the first kill. Heavily lit up are the rest of these T players, though, so it should be, or could be, rather, an easy hold for Hydric here. Tosses out a Molotov. Why aren't they checking his position? Oh my god, they aren't checking his position. Ryder Esports here. They're not able to deal with him. The CTs are just having a day at the shooting gallery. They're able to make it to 15. That is absolutely unbelievable. What the hell? How did that work out so perfectly for them? That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. 15 for Warfare, and a very, very broken buy for Ryder. I say broken. Actually, that is way better than I thought it could be. It uh, just shows how crazy that T economy is, isn't it? You only have to take one Galil. Their utility is still pretty decent. They're going to try to just completely Guerrilla Warfare this one over towards the B-bomb site, but Mills is very quickly going to be at the ready here. Double Molotovs tossed out the CTs at the ready to deal with this. You see Jonesy actually maybe laying the nerves get to him a little bit here. And the CTs, the T's, excuse me, are able to run over them for the most part here. Get bombed down, play it from there. But the CTs still very much have a chance, very much have a foot in their door, or foot in the door for this round. We'll take a very quick shot from either one of these two T's. It might come in the form of Gorilla with that AWP. Now posted up over to watch into construction. Hydric might not be ready though. The sniper has been very strong from Gorilla here. Oh, he's smoking the cross. That's big. But time is starting to run out. Warfare, you need to start making this a little bit quicker here. That's a nice nade on the chip, but can he get the kills to make it through as well? No, they can't. Oh my god. Somehow, Ryder, how do they make that one work too? I swear, I, I feel like Ryder at their most confident, at their strongest, when they're just going with something just balls to the wall like that. Quick rush in towards the B-bomb site. Works an absolute charm for them. And gets them up to 14. I mean, this is it. This is the last one of regulation. This one's going to full distance, and Warfare don't exactly seem up for the challenge just yet. They'll piece together everything they can on the CT side, but Ryder Esports, I think, have their number at the moment. It's very, very likely that we see overtime. And there's a very, very low chance that Warfare can make this tough buy actually work out. But they've gotten this far. Let's see if they can close it out cleanly in regulation on their map pick. Otherwise, it's going to be 8-7 on both sides. I mean, talk about competitive. You can't really get more competitive than that. <laughs> First kill goes away of bow, plus the second one. And, I mean, this is kind of just going the way I think everybody thought it would go. 
when you're against a broken buy like this. Just getting completely mauled, completely run over. And, uh, well, <laughs> there's our ticket to overtime, just like that. It ends with a whimper, not a bang from Warfare. We're going to OT just like that. I mean, that's not even something you can raise your voice at. It's just kind of a quiet defeat. Maybe they just didn't want to have to deal with economy anymore, Warfare. They just decided to give up the ghost, play it from OT, play it out from there. I guess I can't really blame them. But just like that, I mean, 8-7, both sides. Yeah, I mean, hey. You can't get much closer than that, and uh, I think you're starting to understand why. Definitely two evenly matched teams. Both of them are coming out swinging. Right out of the gate. Sometimes it's not even the most like strategically deep rounds. In fact, we haven't seen a lot of that for the most part. So, I mean... I, I guess it's hard to really think of this as a very tactical game. But I've been liking it. Honestly, it's just like a lot of fun to watch. Lots of crazy kills. and I've been liking some of the mid-round calls, if anything. But like the early round where it's like... All right, we're going to be setting up from a bunch of different angles. You know, we're going to toss on smokes, fully execute onto a site. We haven't even had to see a lot of that, to be completely honest. It's been like, you know, think back to that strat that Ryder were doing when they're on full pistols and, or excuse me, when they're on the anti-eco and warfare were on very weak pistols. They just did like ring around the rosy. It was crazy. All evened up. 15 to 15. Both teams will have plenty of money to speak of. And again, the magic number to look for is going to be 19. So the first team to 19 will be able to win this. Except if it gets tied 18 to 18, which in that case, we're going to be going to double OT. Let's not hope on that. Let's knock on wood for that because pretty sure everyone likes Inferno, but not too much of it. Four players stacked up. At the A bomb site for the CT side as well, but first kill still goes the way of Ryder regardless. As eight picks off one, now full execute comes through from the T side with all members at the ready. The only player who's not currently present is Warfare, and actually they've actually tr tracked another player over. Oh man, this could be a disaster. The CT hold has been good for Warfare, but it hasn't been... Two versus five, good, I can really say. Bow's in a absolutely fantastic spot to really uh, keep those CTs there as well, where this should just be easy pickings down as well. Mirth, surprisingly though, with the AUG, strikes first blood, and the second actually comes from Hydric as well. Now a drop into pit comes through. Mirth, I didn't think he was actually going to get that one, but seems to catch me off guard, and it seems like the T's have been caught off guard as well. 20 seconds remain as Ryder are actually pushing into the bomb site, and they actually find themselves a man down, trying to get the bomb down as well. Hydra holds down the site, and he's doing fantastic work of it. Tries to dodge and weave behind the box, but he isn't quite able to survive all too long here. Gorilla somehow finds a second. Now, down from a one-on-three into a one-on-one, -on -one, he finds himself alone versus Mills. And Mills comes out on top. It's quiet. It's a silent defeat versus the AWP. And Mills, he's just looking for a Krieg to try to snatch away. They can rebuy AWPs, no problem. Kriegs are going to be a little bit harder for them to come across. Gray says, get these fucking Kibi ads away from me. <laughs> Dude, if you want to, just put ad block on for my stream. I don't even get paid from ads or anything anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> if you want to enjoy the ad-free experience, ad free experience, I mean, I don't have a really, I don't really have a reason to tell you not to turn ad block off. It's not like anyone's really getting anything better from it. Other than Jeff Bezos, but, I mean, I don't think he really needs the money, doesn't he? Oh, you're on mobile? Okay, that sucks. Never mind. Well, back into the game. No more dealing with ads, but... Ryder Esports have been grinded, ground to a halt over towards Banana. Even taking a little bit of chip damage from those grenades as well to boot. Amen, down on 74. It doesn't really make all too much of a difference, but they are against 3M4s, so it does put them within that one-shot potential, which potentially can make a difference. 
It's a big if, though, because Melo is really going to be the first face and the main face to worry about over at the B-bomb site. Jonesy is also very much a factor towards the site as well, and he's actually able to deliver with one kill for sure. Melo gets the second, but at this point here, it is just a matter of time before he gets traded out. He might actually be roasting like a coke, or <laughs> I was going to say, roasting like a chestnut, but well, the chestnut has struck back, has fired back, and it's now a two on four for this retake. Now, Mello, I mean, he's so patient when he's taking these duels. Warfare really have time on their side at the moment, so they can afford to play it a little bit slower here. Chimp is going to have to pull off a miracle play, and oh my god, he might have actually just done it here. He can't quite get the third. Again, it's Mills to clutch it out. He even has time to boot, so things are looking up for Warfare. In particular, things are looking up for Mills. He has been an absolute hero these past couple rounds. Two one versus one clutches, is it now? I mean, at the same time, you have to hope that Warfare would be able to close these out a little bit more smoothly, but it's overtime. Money doesn't really matter. Like, if this was actually during the, the you know, regulation, I would say, like, okay, uh, <laughs> you can't keep winning like this, Warfare. Your money is going to be in the trenches soon enough, but... Now they're starting to deal with it in a pretty decent fashion. Oh my lord, that nade from Jonesy is disgusting. And Mello is going to be even more disgusting. He's finding three so far. Continue with the quad. Make it an ace, Mello. Make it highlight after highlight for you guys on Warfare. Mello is feeling himself. And he's feeling the kill. An ace for the man. Finish out overtime with style. Bring your team to 18. Unbelievable heroics from the AWP. Knocks Ryder down a peg and puts them within one round of victory on map number one. It's an ace for Mello. An overall an overwhelming victory on the CT side for Warfare. Again, a small little break before we head to the second part of this double or of this first overtime rather. And Warfare has to be feeling good. I mean their T half was solid. And I mean, that CT half that they had in OT was very strong. Sure, they um, choked, nearly choked two 3v1s, but they uh, <laughs> they closed out the round, and really that's what matters more than anything when it comes to OT. Just shows how OT is basically, you know, it, it's like the pinnacle of Counter-Strike. It actually comes down to not having to juggle that much money anymore. I mean, sure, you can't buy, like, uh, you know, a... M249, full armor, full grenades every single round. But for the most part, you can still, like, y you can buy whatever you want. That's what I'm trying to say. And it really kind of comes down to who's, like, the, the better team in that situation. With Warfare not having to worry about that, they just barely scrape out some of these rounds. But Ryder Esports, I mean, they're, they're snapping at their heels. They are very close. It is far from over. If Ryder win this one, you could still see a potential run back happen. And speaking of running, they are just running out the A bomb site now. And this is what worked for them so many times previously when they're on the CT side. This time, it is leading to a complete barrage of bullets back, forth, left, right, center, wherever you want. They're all there. Mills soon is soon the only one left there as well. As he finds himself one versus one. Again, comes down to another situation where there's only one player left remaining. This time, it's Gorilla on the side of Ryder who comes out on top. But that was... Very close to being a victory for Warfare. But it wasn't the cleanest uh, balcony push, I have to say. Three players of Ryder Esports were able to say stay trained on that angle and stayed alive for a very decent amount of time. I would say clutching is not a very convincing way of winning, but it's basically <laughs> Warfare's bread and butter at this point here. And hell, they don't even want to get into a clutch. Gorilla trying to do his best impression of Mello only ends up getting two to his name. Still, that is an absolutely huge man differential to have heading into this next round here. And, I mean, still, kills come through. Barely 40 seconds have passed, and it's already going to be a three-on-two. Soon to be a two-on-two two as well, or a three-on-one. Yeah, make it a three-on-one. Mills, again, against the world, has to clutch it out. And uh, I think we might be seeing 17 for Ryder Esports. P2 
people are just showing off that the CT side is just that strong. Also kind of shows just how even these two teams are. I like it. Mills tossed down a smoke over towards B to try to fake that he's planting over towards the site. But only one player has actually rotated. It's one of the primate crew. Ape is over at B, but Chimp is over at the A bomb site. If Mills can just, just find out where he is, there's a real chance. He checks every angle except the one that Chimp is in. And the monkey brain seems to outdo the Mills brain, at least when it comes to that round, when it least comes to that finish. There's a real opportunity. But I think Ryder have gotten away with a lot of these opportunities. As it's now 17-18, we might be seeing double OT on the first map of this best of three. So I said there's going to be a lot of Counter-Strike coming your way, and I'm showing exactly why. I have to say, though, that round worked out so well because of that double kill from Gorilla to start things off. That was massive. This time he's over towards B. It's only him and one other player as well as Bo. And speaking of which, Bo is just going to be pushing right through towards the top of Banana to take control of it. Tossing down some util and retaking control of Banana is absolutely huge. They managed to make Warfare wiggle out of there. And it's a little bit more map control going the way of Ryder now. But Bo doesn't want to overstay his welcome. He smokes it out and plays the edge of it. As Warfare try to slowly retake it of their own volition. Minute mark passes. The smoke execute just might be in the works here with Jonesy leading the charge. Or perhaps someone else leading the charge here. It's a full execute onto the site here. Three or two CTs at the ready. And Bo completely blind. Actually somehow manages to stay alive. It's a bit of a whiff spray, but... He does not quite get the kill. Gorilla is able to get one, though, and that's a little bit more important, arguably. Spam comes through. Gorilla's position is given up. Oh, but he's so damn good with that M4. Somehow gets one onto Kydric, and because of that, man advantage belongs to Ryder as they begin this retake. And it's so difficult. Warfare, I mean, they're playing for double OT here. It's double OT. Or they're going to be able to win this map here. And it's looking an awful lot like double OT at this point here. Made even more convincing after eight. Chimp both find kills. Mills only able to find one in response. And just like that, double OT. I guess I didn't knock on wood hard enough. I said, I like Inferno, but I don't want to see too much of it. But I think we're going to be here for a while. Now, the number that we're looking for is going to be 22. So whatever team makes it to 22 first will win this. Otherwise, we go into triple overtime if it's tied 21-21. Which, considering how back and forth these games have been, and really how uh, flawless these CT sides have been from Ryder and Warfare, actually, uh, it's still very much a possibility that this goes into double OT <laughs> if it continues in the same fashion that that first OT was. And double ops in play from Ryder to start things off. Start out with a bang, perhaps, an ape. Well, the bang doesn't connect, but he still starts it out, starts it out with a bang. I gotta say, Warfare, you are getting your money's worth at the moment. And that op is also getting its money's worth, but the AK also has a pretty good bang for its buck. Trades out Bo, who takes down an unsuspecting Mellow. The op might be retrieved, actually. Mills seems to be eyeing it. Jonesy's also not too bad with it as well, if necessary. Honestly, I might be biased just because I have had the opportunity to watch and even play against some of these players, but Mills and Jonesy are honestly, like, sick players. They are so flexible in a bunch of different roles. Like, they can make it pretty decently far, and right now they are doing well. Making their team proud. Warfare. Now have fully decided to group up over towards B and make it a conga line towards the site. Two CT per site and a little bit more time burned off the clock as the Molotov goes down. 
Oh, look at this. Rotate has actually dragged its way over towards A. Oh, that is such an unfortunate call. Ryder, they're still going to be able to make it in time as Warfare Storm over the site, but Gorilla will have to hold this down at least for a matter of time here. He needs to burn some time off this wick here, and he does a great job at least getting one player, but now the Rotates will indeed come through, and they're just in time as well. Ape was such a massive player last time around. We saw him in this area here, and he's just millimeters off of being able to connect on that shot as well. He connects with another when given the opportunity as it comes down to two versus two, Mirth dancing behind this pillar. Looks to stay alive if he possibly can as Mills goes for the flank. Mirth, oh my god, he needs to stay alive as long as he can! He catches out Eamon when the nade is in his hand. And now Mills will have to pull off absolutely nothing, apparently. I thought for sure Mirth was going to get traded out, but apparently not. He was just stuck relegating to that corner. A one versus, or two versus one. An ape falls as the victim. This has been the first T round that we have seen one in overtime, by the way. We have seen seven with only one going the way of the T's. Uh, it's a good start, Warfare. I don't, I, I genuinely have no idea how that shot did not hit. That is kind of absurd. But somehow, Gorilla doesn't quite hit the flick. He's going to be given a second chance yet again. Watching a close angle. Flashes surely will come through. Nice little tag on the mills. That one does connect. That hopper is deadly. The worst part is there's one towards either site, so you can't really escape it. You cannot escape the ape. Speaking of which, ape... Oh my god, he's so damn close to being able to find one kill here. He peeks down mid-dry. And since he's going in dry, they aren't ready. This is a little bit more convincing now, Ryder. They don't give up the early picks. Instead, they're finding them. Push out from Mills. Comes through over towards Boiler. They aren't looking under Porch. And that's where A-Man is able to find another one before he falls. Although Mills gets another one with his off as well. The CTs just overwhelm Warfare and will eventually win it by the numbers alone. Now entering this final one of the first half of second OT. It's a bit of a word salad to explain exactly where we are during this game, but possibly reaching the conclusion of it. Whoever gets this next round, honestly, it does matter a lot for momentum. Because again, we've seen how solid the CT halves are from teams like Warfare. And Ryder alike, actually. We've seen how solid the CT defenses are on both sides, but it's just scary. Oh, did Mills hear the scope? I'm not sure if he heard the scope. He could just pre-aim, theoretically, and get one for free. Speaking of which, a trade over at A. Mills still lurks, but I guess I can't really even keep up the action anymore. Oh, Mills peeks up. How does he win that duel? That is absurd. Bo is even ready for it, but Mills still wins it. Oh, man. That has to hurt. Now Ryder on the back foot here. Will force Amen to go for something a little bit sneaky, but Jonesy, you can't catch him off guard apparently. Now it concludes into a four on two with Chimp hiding in towards Pit, has given away his position, completely flashed up. Can't even find the kill. And I think we're going to be seeing 20 to 19, and overall a very promising score for Warfare to close this out on the next part of this half. Jonesy with a shot to close things out makes it a little bit stylish as he takes Gorilla to the grave. And it's 20 <laughs> for Warfare. This has been a marathon of a map so far, I have to say. And God, we're only within map we're only in map number one, too, which is absurd. Again, it's really hard to think of a team that is, like, for sure going to be able to win this one. I have to give the edge to Warfare just simply because, I mean, one, it's their map pick. Two, they got two rounds on the T-half, which is more than either of them did previously. <laughs> I mean, if their CT side is even half as good as it was the first time around, surely they'll be able to close it out within these next few. But, <laughs> who knows? I want you guys to knock on wood for me because I might be wrong yet again. This game has gone the distance so far. And we're only potentially a third of the way through. 
and that's scary. Small little break. Sure, the players need it, and I'm sure my voice needs it as well. As the dust settles. Oh, my voice uh, definitely could do with a little bit of rest. I actually might get more, might get more water if this uh, this game continues for a couple of more overtimes. <laughs> Reflect, what's up, man? This is kind of the calm before the storm at the moment. Waiting for the next part of OT to begin. I mean, honestly, how much can you even talk about what's been... Oh, yeah, still got another map? No, we still got a potential two maps. Yeah, exactly. So we're potentially in this one for the long haul. Map one has delivered for this series. I gotta say, both these teams seem incredibly evenly matched. I've seen Warfare play a couple times previously, and I've only seen Ryder play once, and that was versus West Coast Waifus. Um, and I watched it from the West Coast Waifus POV, who beat them. Warfare, I mean, when they get going, they get going. They have gotten going. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it's still anybody's game. It's I, I think it's it's just hard for me to make a prediction at this point. Based off the sheer numbers alone, the sheer track record, Warfare are arm's length away from closing this one out. We're potentially in the zone. We're finding ourselves on Mirage very, very soon. Double snipers brought out from Warfare. Might be their recipe for number 21. At which point, double OT will be, or triple OT, excuse me, will be confirmed. It's all quiet for now, though. Ryder. We'll be playing a little bit passive. But there, the flash has come up here, and that will mark the end of their passive play and mark the beginning of something new. A push in towards A, where Hydric is able to find nice double, a nice double, excuse me, before he just goes down like the rest. I mean, sure, two players have been removed from the equation on the side of Warfare, but the problem is still just as difficult for Ryder. And they need to learn how to solve it. Doubled up over towards Mini Pit. Might be something that Warfare aren't quite ready for. This is a pretty strong angle, but usually you don't see a double commit over towards this area. Bo making his way over towards the big pit. I mean, now they've both given up their positions. Ryder are dead to rights here. And it's 21 for Warfare. That is so, so much more smooth than I think we've seen from any of the CT rounds so far. <laughs> I mean, that was a very convincing retake. Start and finish. Press, you know, pr press the left mouse button to win, that sort of deal. Like, just clicking heads. Graze says, Ryder is probably better than the last team he played. And yeah, no, that I mean, that has to be the case. Ryder are second seed in the season, in the regular season. They're one hell of a team. It's important that is not forgotten. So one hell of a team here, and they can still make some magic happen. But Warfare are just equally as magical, if not more so. They try to go for something a little bit ambitious over towards B, a boost up from Mellow, but the shot doesn't quite connect over on the player at Logs. Again, if I want to bring up the Warfare Magic, I'll have to swing the wand. The big magic stick that Mills has in his hand. They're going to be going for a potential crossfire of Ops? No, okay, Mills is just going to be at the ready, toss down a smoke, rotate over towards A. It's actually a pretty decent read, too, because Ryder have just about booked it over towards the site in question. Hydric is a bit further up than his teammate Mirth, but Mirth has been really solid in this position when we saw him last. Again, that rotate from Mills will come through here. Now full execute begins from the side of Ryder here, but they've only taken brackets control for the time being. Being warded off by these smokes makes the equation, again, a little bit harder for them. They still haven't dedicated another player over. Mirth is in a perfect situation to find one to boot. It's quiet. Take it slow. Take it smooth. Great nade through. Opens things up onto Ape. Just a bit of a tag up. Hydric has actually given his position away as well. So that means that Ryder can theoretically... Ooh. 
Take down the players quickly. I just imp it's important to mention Mills actually decided to stop going over towards the A bomb site here. And oh, it is a cataclysmic event. Ryder Esports with 10 seconds left. Strike blood. And take the site somehow. I mean, Warfare, there's no reason why they shouldn't go for this retake. It's still possible in theory. Plus, they have money for days. Mills will be watching in towards Pit here as the smoke goes out towards Mini. Mills. Doesn't quite get the shot off that he hopes for, but that's a nice little tank through the wall, I believe it was. At this point here, it is just a matter of time before we are going to be seeing 2120. And possibly get ready to book your tickets for triple OT. Mills tries to pad his stats at the end of the day, but unfortunately, can't quite do it. I mean, again, <laughs> what, what's something unique I can say at this point here? Ryder Esports just managed to take over that site perfectly. The rotate was, it seemed a little bit ambitious. I mean, Ryder haven't been exactly fond of slow exacting on to be. What the hell just happened with Mirth? Oh my god, he's just dead. In the matter of seconds, it's going to be another kill. And, oh, man, just take us to triple OT. We're basically there at this point. Now going to have to be a 5 versus 2 victory somehow, some way from Warfare. I don't think of it as possible in the slightest here, and I don't think Chimp does either. Takes down Mills with a couple of bullets to the dome here, and Hydric has not a chance either. Oh my god. I swear to god, Ry just Warfare, you, you guys are getting your money's worth out of me, I tell you. Triple OT on map number one. There's still two more gains in this series, potentially. Riders somehow get two T rounds of their own. What is it? What's the now magic number to look for? Is it 25, is it? <laughs> you know what? I just need to stop jinxing it. I'm just going to say we're going to be entering triple OT very soon. I just wish that everybody didn't have to ready up every single time because there's these very awkwardly long pauses in between. And it gets a bit annoying. Why won't my alerts work? This is kind of weird. There we are. Now they're working. It's all evened up. This is absolutely crazy. I mean, it just seems so strange. Because both teams, like, feel extremely convincing for just a couple of rounds. And then they just, like, uh, go back to, you know, a little bit more of a normal form. And then the other team steps up and has, like, a crazy... You know, an amazing round where all their players step up. It, it doesn't really seem like any team, I mean, I guess the score suggests it as well, but no, neither team is really, like, I guess, extremely, like, showing up, you know, blowing up, going huge or anything. It just kind of seems insanely neck and neck to, like, a frustrating degree. It's crazy. They only needed two to close that, too, Warfare. That's so unfortunate. Aren't able to do it. And they, you know. <laughs> I mean, Ryder. They now find themselves in a pretty tricky position on their own right here. Starting things out on the T side again. You saw how turbulent it can be for them. But they seem to be a completely changed team. Amen with the first. Removes Mills. Rotation. Oh my god, look at this. Look at Bo. There's no way Jonesy's ready for it. What the hell? I feel bad. I have no idea what Jonesy was looking for here, but Bo strikes blood. No problem. Execute onto the site. This is all falling apart. This is an absolute disaster. Rider. They pull off the sneaky plays. They pull off absolutely everything they had to, and it's going to get them the perfect recipe for number 22. I have no clue what the hell just happened there, but... Ryder, absolutely dominant in that round. They'll give up one gun to Amen, or they'll give up one gun to Mellow. That'll be Amen, possibly the first, possibly the last as well. Ape is patient on his spray to finish up Mellow. No more stat padding for you. 21, 22. 
feels like at this point I'm just reading off the score, but I mean, I, I still am just kind of blown away by what happened last round from Ryder. That was insane, pushing into CT like that. I didn't even get the chance to figure out what was going on. And, well, Mills, he wants to ground himself to reality. He tries taking a pot shot over at mid. Unfortunately, he doesn't quite connect. That leaves his team in a very neutral state here. That flash, I don't feel like it should have hit Mills, but somehow it does. Luckily, though, Hydric will be there to watch his teammates back. Finds two kills. The third, how are these shots not connecting for Mills? That is unbelievable. Again, his teammates are stepping up, but Mills, I mean, these are some shots that need to be hitting. And there we are. That's the kind of setup. That's the sort of execution that I want to see. And speaking of execution, Mills is executed by burning alive. That consolidates to a one versus one. Pieces fall into place, and Mello has snuck up entirely against Gorilla, and Gorilla is wise to it! A one on two! I can just never give up anything here. Ryder Esports surprise me. They take the words out of my mouth. Two rounds on the, CT, on the T side, excuse me, so far. They only need one more to put themselves on match point. This is impressive, I gotta say. Ryder Esports are really able to shine in, in a lot of these late round scenarios and it's doing great for them. I mean, they're able to shine and even though some of the rounds end up having to fall in on clutches from players like Gorilla, it's still like, th these feel like convincing rounds for the most part. Oh, man, at the same time though, nothing is just going the way of Warfare, is it? This CT side is an absolute disaster for them. Even the nades are off a bit. Jonesy misses his smoke, unfortunately. Ape, who's now made his way to 40, finally. Highest in the server. Has also taken down Melo to boot. The T's honestly can take this wherever they want. You see that his teammates are all starting to gather up towards Banana. And Ape has just found number 42. <sighs> it's it's done. I am pretty sure Ryder Esports, they have everything going their way at, the, at this moment. You can't convince them otherwise. There's no arguments. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a nightmare. Smurf against five. No reason not to go for this clutch, but that makes it sound like you'll even have a chance. Ryder Esports are firing on all cylinders. And, I mean, this is about to slip out of control for Morphair. I have to say, I mean, look, this has been a crazy map one, and uh, very due diligence to both teams, because uh, it was very close at the end of the day, but triple OT is when you fall, and I think Warfare just actually might have it slip away from them at this point. They're on the T side, and they'll have to make it a flawless T side at that just to keep themselves alive. Luckily, the shot misses for Ape. It feels like the only shot that has missed so far, but you see Ryder are starting to feel themselves a lot more. Aggression down towards mid. The nades are through. First kill goes the way of Warfare, but it's going to be far from the last kill. That is... I, what the hell? The bomb is already down, Banana. I... I can't even continue on with my regular sentence before Ryder decide to mix up the equation. They get another kill. That's nice. Four on three now. Four on two now. That's a nice little shot. Okay, maybe Warfare uh, are going to be at least able to punish this strange setup that Ryder were going for. But they still need to grab the bomb. They still need to win out from there. So... They're not out of the woods, but there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Oh, Bo. Nice attempt at a flash. This is now just basically Gorilla's turn to try to have some fun in the limelight, but the lights are quickly dimmed. Twenty-four, twenty-two. my god. I mean, <laughs> again... It feels like I'm just reading off the scorecard at this point. These rounds, is, I mean, towards the end, they've been a little bit sloppier. Like, Ryder Esports, they ba basically gifted that one just try by trying to BM. <sighs> Christ, how how does Melo still lose that duel? Gorilla had everything going against him. His position was given up in a second. Still somehow, somehow manages to beat out Melo. 
That hurts. This is a pretty painful wound for Warfare to have to patch up in this round here. Again, they're going to have to make this a flawless uh, T side half in OT just to bring it to quad. Otherwise, it's probably going to be the end of the line. This next duel could really decide all. Amen. Doesn't have a chance. That's a good start. The Krieg outdoes the M4. That makes sense. That's a bit of rationality. But Ape is trying to break that rationality as he's peeking up aggressively. Manages to find the bomb carrier. Manages to find a second. It's unbelievable how it just works time after time. This aggression is just the key to victory, seemingly. And it's done. Ryder Esports in triple overtime. Steal map number one away from Warfare. It goes the absolute distance. But they take it. I don't know, man. I don't even know how to feel about this one. I mean... It's like... There were so many opportunities where I felt like it was so promising for Warfare to be able to take that one. But something crazy from Ryder Esports just one up them completely. It's pretty absurd. It, it just shows the res resilience, though. I mean, that was an incredibly close game. And you can't really hope for much closer than that. Again, there's still potentially two more maps of play tonight. So we're far from, I guess, out of the woods. There's still plenty more to go. I'm going to toss it to a quick break to rest my voice for a second. God knows I need it. And we'll be seeing you on Mirage in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. My name is Ito. If you enjoy, please feel free to follow me on Twitter or Twitch. I'll drop my Twitter right here. Anyway, I'll see you very, very soon. Don't go anywhere. like a phantom i don't own that house in the hamptons and my two chains ain't gold at all i can't buy you a diamond necklace being good with money takes practice but somehow i don't mind at all because no one's got what we got we hit it up on rooftops no matter what they say we will do this our way
All hoping that map number two can deliver just as match, much as map number one did. And I will be here to try to take you through it. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ito, and we are just hopping straight into map number two. This is the pick of Ryder Esports here. It's going to be Mirage doubled up over to under Palace here. Will be two players of Warfare, one of which will find a kill. And they aren't actually expecting the second. Jonesy is doing amazing. And I barely have time to rest my voice. Talk about the matchup when Warfare just immediately storm over and take that round out of what seemed absolutely nowhere. I feel like there just is no downtime in this match as well. I gotta say, that was brilliantly played. I said a couple of times previously on map number one that it felt like there sometimes was not like a ton of crazy tactical depth coming out from either side here, in particular Ryder Esports. <laughs> just kind of, it felt like pugging it out at some points, but that was a nice little setup to start things off on a good note, in my opinion. Tagged up will be Jonesy, though, to start off number two, which uh, slightly dampens the possibility of them taking this one out cleanly here. But Mirth will try to drown my sorrows, drown my worries with a single kill onto Amen to start things off. Ryder, unfortunately, after losing that pistol, will be stuck up on 
Nothing more than a couple of upgrade pistols, Mac 10 and a Scout. It's actually not a half bad buy, and they seem to actually be finding decent damage with it. Mills going down quickly. Leaves Mirth to hold down the A bomb site alone as Jonesy rotates slowly through. Jonesy probably going to get caught out from at least one of these many angles that Ryder are pushing in from. And it seems that the ramp angle is the one that proves to lead to his demise. Mirth, however, still very much in the back line. If this sneaky action works out yet again, Warfare could easily find themselves in a very strong spot here. And indeed, that seems to be the case. Mirth, incredible double, leaves his team open for victory, or at least the possibility of it. As Mello and Hydric now have to make it work together. They can try to divide their fights, and Hydric is very good at long division, isn't he? He takes down Chimp to start things off, possibly the beginning of the end. And Ape now has to clutch it out with a Deagle, of which he's unable to find even the first victim of it, Mirth. I gotta say, that flank was absolutely game-changing. If he didn't get that, I mean, we could be looking at an even-up scoreline very early on on map number two. Aw, yo, thanks for the follow and thanks for the love, man. I appreciate you. I hear. I, I don't exactly have like a love emote, but I'll do this. I appreciate the love, man. Try my best to put on a good show, and hell, both these teams have put on a better show than I can even hope to do. But it's quiet for now. At least it's ground down to a halt, and. Just as soon as there's silence, it opens right back up, back up with the ringing of Deagle shots out over at B. Mello immediately falls victim. But I think from here it should be a decent enough cleanup. I mean, Bomb is down from Ryder. They're going to have to retrieve it or win by elimination, which I got to say at this point they are looking keen to win it by elimination as they found a numerous amount of kills just out of nowhere. <laughs> I, I, I just... I gotta say, Ryder, no matter what they given, they're given, they are just so damn good on that trigger. They're able to secure kills that it just never seems to be in anyone's favor. Oh, Hydric. Now knows that Amen is still looking at that angle through the death box, through the murder hole. But dealing with it is another situation entirely. And Amen, he is up for the challenge. He somehow extends it to a quad. Does anyone have a chance at contesting this player? It's unbelievable. Damn, those are some nice emotes, bro. I gotta say. Nice. <laughs> Either way, this is uh, a bit rough. Warfare. I mean, that was pretty promising. Ryder Esports are just able to kind of whittle away this by taking these fights so early on in rounds. It's so difficult for the CT to actually do anything. I mean... Honestly, this is kind of what I'm talking about when it comes to tactical depth. Sometimes it's not even that at all. It's just, you know, orking out over at a site or something of the sort here. I mean, hell, you barely see any nades getting used this round here, but they're just all getting picked way out by Kriegs and all the good stuff. As it will quickly lead to a second for the T side. That was kind of a freebie round, though, I gotta say. Zymen, did I say Zymen? <laughs> That's my B. Guess I'm slurring my words a little bit. I'm just punch drunk. Punch, yeah, no, I, I can't speak. I'm punch drunk after uh, all the punches I've taken from Ryder Esports so far. This should be another gimme round, I should say, from Warfare. There's really uh, nothing more than a couple of pencil, pencils. Pistols? Christ, can I talk for the most part here? I swear. It's harder for me to talk than it is to find a round versus Ryder Esports here, apparently. They are just getting everything. I fumble. But Ryder do not. They get the second just like that. A little bit more money in their pockets. And things continue to look good for them early on on Mirage. Again, this is the map pick of them. You would have to hope that uh, they uh, are well equipped to deal with pretty much anything here. And right now, things seem pretty solid. I mean, I gotta say, even the two rounds at Warfare 1, only the pistol was exactly convincing. From there on out, I mean, so far, it has been really neck and neck. Warfare just kind of teetering on that breaking point. This seems a little bit better of a start, though. They find three kills. Not quite the fourth that they're hoping for here, but the shot was even dead on the head. This spray doesn't quite connect. They're very... 
quick and dirty rounds again. But it will eventually fall onto Bo's shoulders against four members. And his position is given up too. I mean, I think Mills or Mello spotted it over towards Connector. Or it's just a matter of time before he finds himself in the crosshairs of the IGL. A triple for him. And Mills, I gotta say, he's been having a really solid series so far. Map number one, we saw him pull out a lot of these important clutches. And uh, map number two, he has not let off the gas pedal just yet. A double op setup is brought out by Warfare to face off against Ryder for this seventh round of play, is it? Nice little leg shot starts things off, but Mills has no clue of it. Significantly could change up how Amen plays it. But I think they don't even want to bother here. Bo extending a little bit fur further than he might have actually been given the opportunity to, but Chimp steals away the aggression that his teammate could not get. We're back into an even even game scenario. In fact, Ryder will just take it like that. It feels like at this point here, Warfare are just giving them some fights. And they are happy to take it, the tease. Warfare, at least what it seems like from my uh, third-party perspective, is that they seem to shine the most when they wait for Ryder to exactly... Or to, to, to bring the fights to them, I suppose. Think about what happened on the pistol and what Mirth was doing on the second round. Unfortunately, the angle is a bit ambitious and he is immediately taken out, Mirth. It's got to be a save in order. I mean, there's no other no other chance, no upper other opportunity for Warfare to really come back into this one. It's so difficult. I mean, these fights are insanely one-sided at points. Ryder Esports seems so comfortable just hitting their shots and I mean, a lot of the time, it worked out just fine. That relentless aggression seriously just feels to be the nail in the coffin for Warfare so far on the CT side. Again, we're still early on. We're not even halfway through this first half. We're just about to be, but not quite. But unrelenting, I mean, Warfare is still pushing in. They have won the round here, but they're still trying to kiss through the smoke. He's still just rushing like a, like a true ape. There's a knife nearly. What the hell is that from Chimp? <laughs> I mean, does that not prove my point perfectly? Ryder are just, like, unrelenting. They cannot give Warfare an inch. Because they know they will try to extend it to a foot. Try to extend it to a mile. Like, these guys are just taking everything they can. They are absolutely ruining Warfare so far early on here. Again, even the rounds where Warfare have won, only two of them have actually looked, like, very convincing. Oh, Christ, that's what I'm talking about. It's unrelenting. They just keep at it. They've already had two kills. They're just pressing W straight into them, and they're going to get everything they need. There is no stopping these players at the moment. It is just depressing to be on the receiving end of. It's depressing to watch. This is what Warfare, this was their bread and butter versus some of the teams that they stomped out during the regular season. I got to say, it feels like they're just getting a bit of revenge. Ryder Esports, I mean, I think back to their other matchups that they've had in the playoffs so far. This seems to be echoing a lot um, of what the series was like versus Supremacy Gaming. The first game that they have, it was on Vertigo last time, was an insanely, insanely close game. In fact, it went the way of Supremacy. But from there on, Ryder only lost 10 rounds in the next two maps. I'm hoping that Warfare can put on a better show at least than what Supremacy did on maps 2 and 3. But who's to say for sure? I mean, Ryder, they have full confidence. When they're finding kills 10, 20 seconds into the round, all you can do is just kind of hope. And hell, that's that's what Melo had to do to save his op. It's honestly crazy. This does give an opportunity, though, for Warfare to maybe think about things for a second. They are going to be stuck on pistols. I don't think exactly trying to bring the fight to them is a good idea. I, I like the idea of things that people like Murph were, Murph were doing. Excuse me. Ryder had never played Vertigo before until last series. That is crazy. I didn't think Supremacy played a lot of it either, but it just shows that anything goes. A firing range of pistols 
leads to a firing range for the rifles as well. Although the pistols are doing very considerable damage and they actually come out on top of the fights as they take them over towards connector. They're still pistols at the end of the day. They're not going to be able to do that much damage probably from this point forward. Ryder at this point might be shaking in their boots a little bit. And they're fine, like, maybe playing it a little bit slower. Bo, with an AK in hand, is leading the charge while Chimp is just watching the back for the inevitable market flank. But overwhelmed by pistols again, this time it will be Bo, and maybe I spoke too soon. Warfare. They did a really good job at punishing what Ryder have been doing with that aggression. Instead of just bring it towards Connector early on and just, like, saying, hey, come and get me. I mean, there's many more kills where that came from here. Nice little dink up from Mills, and the USP finishes the job. That was really solid, I gotta say. I really did think I, or do think I spoke too soon when it comes to how Warfare dealt with that. It's important to remember, I mean, Mills is good at these kind of adjustment calls. We saw it a lot of times during the season, and I've had the pleasure to cast his games when he's, you know, been on land before. I've heard his team comms. He can adjust to things like this, even if it's in a more puggy setting. Like some of the Arizona lands that I, again, have casted. Word. Again, aggressing over towards mid. Perhaps this is not the kind of adjustment call that I wanted. But it shows a bit of a switch up of what Warfare are trying out. They're trying to, you know, bring the approach a bit more aggressive at mid. It's just that, unfortunately, Ryder and co. are just that damn good. The shots aren't connecting for Warfare either, which doesn't exactly help their case. And... By the time I'm done ranting about how Mills has potential, I turn out looking like Bo's Bobo the Clown. As everyone dies on Warfare in not too much time whatsoever. They speedrun that one. And hey, uh, well, this is now going to be a really awkward situation economically for Warfare. About half of the players can buy, half of them can only put together pistols. And so they're going to force up whatever they can. I... I'm not feeling lucky, but Warfare, I mean, hey, they're the ones who made it this far in the first place. Maybe they know what's up more than me. You see, already mid-aggression is through from Ryder Esports here. I feel like in a perfect world, Mills would be able to watch Connector, since he has two players already committed over towards Palace and Ramp, respectively. Oh, it doesn't even seem like Ryder were particularly looking for a player over at Ticket Booth. In theory, it feels like it would work. Ryder have considerably slowed this down already, though. As they start to push through Connector, they'll get back more into that more usual pace that I think we're all expecting. And over at A, blood is immediately struck. Blood is immediately shed. And there's more where that came from, too. Jonesy is the next victim on the list of Ryder Esports hit list. And it continues just to look more and more awful as time goes by. Like, they just know. They're <laughs> insane at the moment. This is... It's just hard to play against, in all honesty. Because Warfare has some of the right ideas. They're keeping it competitive so far. But they're losing a lot of these fights. And it, it's just so hard to play from a man down, I'm sure, is completely obvious if you have played CS before. I mean... Especially when you're a man down versus a team that seems to be completely just pugging it out and hitting their shots. Like, it's hard. Dude, Ryder isn't even calling LL. They're literally just pugging. I mean, hey, they were doing that on map number one, too. That's a thing. Like, Richie, as far as I uh, as far as far I saw, like, it, it was just straight up pugging when it comes to some of those rounds on Inferno as well. And it works out. I mean, sure, they're against pistols there. This time, the pistol attempt from Warfare is not nearly as volatile. As guns are brought up to the table yet again. Richie, I think your prophecy might come through yet again because, I mean, you said it. It really is just pugging. There's a reason Ryder Esports chose this map. Because they're all comfortable in it. And there has been... Almost no need for strats so far. Look at it. Like, come on. How is that tactical? No, it isn't. It's just a peek out mid. They find one kill. Hell, they're about to find second here, too. Jonesy. Okay, actually, never mind. Wins that one versus Amen. And Mills wins one as well. Maybe I spoke too soon because Warfare seemed a little bit more equipped for the fights early on. But for how long will that last? 
There's still a util in play from Riot or Esports if they even feel like it. Feels like these are some of the first gunfights that Riot have really struggled to win. Ape completely caught out of nowhere in no man's land. Stuck out by Tetris. Leads to a one on four for Gorilla to win. Gorilla. Man in question. Isn't quite ready for Murph's off angle. It's strong and it leads them to a fifth round. The best that they can hope for at this point will be 8-7. Which is, uh, well, if you remember correctly, the exact same halftime score that we saw for Inferno. So again, I mean, things seem relatively even keeled. It's going to be gun rounds all the way through for the duration of this half, though. And that's what's important to mention. I mean, Ryder Esports, since they has had such a massive buffer and the rounds that they did win, hell, even the rounds that they lost, they were able to get so much money out of it that they can just keep on pumping up those guns, 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 time and time again. And it's suffocating to play against. Bringing a conga line of Paris up towards Cat might be a nice little switch up, though. And look at that. They win all the fights. <laughs> that was a three versus five made into a three versus two with warfare on the back end of it. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my God. Hits the Krieg shot onto Mills to boot. It's Mirth alone. And Bo is even trained on the angle that he's going to be coming from. Hell, he even extends his reach a little bit further. Try to get him out before he even has a chance to jump out the window. A-Man also tries to finish up the job, but he's denied of the opportunity. But Warfare are denied of the round. They will be getting, what is it, 2900 in their pockets after this one here? So they can afford something decent. If Mirth manages to keep this M4, they could probably get M4s on every single player. Maybe one person would have to... Actually, wait, no. Do they not have 2900 Jesus Christ, their money is even more dire than I thought. So there's going to be probably no op in play unless Mellow were to drop it. Indeed, that is the case. Okay, so the CTs, well, they're throwing the Hail Mary at this point, I guess. Hell, it's the last round of the half. Why not go for something a bit strange? Double snipers from Mills and Mellow. Working out to varying degrees of success so far this half, but pretty much everything has worked out to varying degrees of success so far for Warfare. These gunfights going about 50-50 so far. Mirth and Ape both win one. Mirth hiding under palaces on borrowed time. Gets one more kill before he falls. And, I mean, Mills, he's being collapsed on by so many different angles. These initial fights that aren't being won is just such a tall order. And Ryder Esports, they're hitting everything. They don't have to worry about the same, so excuse me, the same sort of things that Warfare are. It's honestly so hard to play against. And, uh, I mean, hey, respect to them. Both these teams. We saw how close it was on map number one. Map number two, I gotta say, it is seeming a lot more one-sided. It sucks, too, because, I mean, there's so many chances, I feel like, where Warfare had a decent read. On, on what Ryder were trying to do. Because, again, they are really pugging this one out. You can't really say there's much tactical depth in this game. But, I mean, it's just that Warfare. They're not winning these gunfights. Ryder are just so damn confident taking these fights. And it's showing. I mean, they're treating it like a deathmatch server. They're going to be taking a quick little break. But we're already into the second half of our DM server or sorry, match. <laughs> it's going to be Pistol DM. To start this one out. 10-5 with Warfare on the short end of the stick. Well, I wouldn't say need to win this round to really uh, have a chance of making a comeback happen, but it is of importance that they at least make it competitive if they go down. It would be a very nice buffer, a nice start a good way to at least try to even the score a little bit more if Warfare can win this one here. Will they be given the chance? That's another question entirely. Four players stacked over towards B for Ryder with Amen watching over at mid. 
It's going to be an A connect with split here. So Amen should be able to have easy pickings over a couple of players. And speaking of which, Amen peeks his face a little bit late here. Tapping away. Can't quite convert a kill. Now full wrap from the CT side or into CT, excuse me, comes through. And the Glocks are actually winning that initial fight here. Tags right back. It's actually Amen. What the hell was that? It's a triple from him. Lines up three. Knocks them all down. This man, I swear to God, he's a, a bowler. He's knocking these pins down. He's only going to be able to get three, but he is undeniably the hero of the round. <sighs> he is 22 and 8, highest in the server. At this point, he's more than just the hero of the round. He is the hero of the game. He might be the hero of the series as well. Incredible performance from him so far. I said that was a very important round for Warfare to win. But not necessarily a must win. But the fact that they... Had a very nice strat of what they're doing, trying to push over towards B, but didn't manage to drag any rotations over. That's not that convincing. And now they're in a rough spot. 11 to 5, surely 12 5, unless they somehow get away with something absolutely unseen of, or unheard of, rather. I'm not feeling like it's a possibility. <laughs> Four players over towards underpass is pretty nice, so. Amen is this going to have his day at the buffet, though. Gets three. And, uh, well, number four will go the way of Chimp. They've just about booked the end of the series. They're only four away. Their next hurdle arises in the form of the third round of this second half, where Warfare will be able to bring up guns. AK-47s. A single Krieg and a single Galil. Lots of util and lots of opportunities for Warfare to at least make this one bloody. At least make this one close. And it all conflicts with the ideology of what Ryder Esports want to do. Just pug it out here. I guess Warfare are trying to say right now anything you can do, we can do better. They just immediately run out A. Not much utility whatsoever being thrown. Working to a decent degree of success. However, that's a nice little double commit onto Mirth. Finds himself at the forefront of death. Falling onto Amen. If there's anyone on this team right now who can clutch it, it is most definitely him. But maybe that's even too tall of an order for him. Because he just kind of falls just as quickly as the rest of his team. And it will be six for Warfare, so... Perhaps the only winning move is to copy exactly how Ryder have been playing it. We didn't see a smoke for CT. I think maybe we saw a smoke for a connector come through. That was really about it. In a perfect world, this should be around that Warfare win. But we've seen how this half has gone. And plus we see how that smoke... Wait, was that actually a miss smoke or was that a... Yes, I love it. I was about to say, is it a one way? And indeed it is a one way. I, l I mean, I like it, but... Doesn't feel like it has the best value on a round like this. I mean, surely it was one way, right? Not just like a top mid smoke that failed. I can't imagine it being. Either way, he treated it as one way where it has me convinced. Speaking of things that are convincing, this buy from Ryder Esports is not one of those. Deegs and scouts. Or not even Deegs, excuse me. Just pistols and scouts. And an immediate 4 versus 5. Immediate 3 versus 5. That Krieg is so damn good. The Krieg in general is so damn good. But especially when it's in the hands of someone like Melo. Our player to watch heading into map number 2. He has been one of the beacons of light so far for Warfare. And they're otherwise very gloomy. Very depressing map number 2. Taking it over towards the B bomb site now will be Warfare though. The T side looks to get the bomb down. And play it from the post plant. Just get a little bit more money under their belt. As they look to try to make the scoreline a little bit more palatable. It's decent damage done at the end of the day. I have to say, Ryder. With pistols and scouts, they're able to take down three guns of warfare. Which is so big. They're chipping away at the economy slowly but surely. And that can really start mattering down the line. If Ryder start winning rounds. If they can keep up this aggression. There's going to be a breaking point where Warfare are not going to be able to find that much money to gather together, scrounge together, and actually make uh, a, a strong hitting buy. But again, just like that though, many more opportunities arrive for Warfare to make a little bit more cash. 
You see that since Ryder on pistols and scouts yet again, they should be, in theory, easier kills for them to get. Rack up a little bit of cash and get that win bonus too. Check this out. Two players aggressive over towards A ramp. And uh, those was none the wiser. Nice tag from Ape. Puts Mellow down. What? Holy hell. What a crazy shot from Ape. That is unbelievable. Takes down Mills. I gotta be pissed. I mean, if I were Mills, I would be straight up like smashing my keyboard at that one here. What a depressing way to die. A nuts shot from Ape. Brings things right back into an even scenario. But I think it might finish at this site. The B-bomb site in question. Quick tag up from Connector leads to the near death of Hydric. But I think Jonesy might have just grounded them to reality. He's on three so far. Might be able to expend, extend to number four or five if he gets a little bit lucky. But a Krieg has been taken under siege from the side of Ryder. And in fact, they're actually committing to this retake. I don't even have time to breathe for a second while Bo is able to find two in a one versus three. He's the lowest fracking player in the server at the moment here, but he could actually go absolutely huge. Looks away. Now both players dangerously low on health here. Bo taps the bomb, but gets tapped down in return. Hydra keeps the, de the dreams alive for warfare. But again, that is more than enough for Ryder. That's two rounds in a row where they managed to make it very, very competitive, nearly snatching it away from Warfare. And that is huge because look at the money. Mel has $250. Mirth has no util and in sync like an AK-47. This will have to be just like a quick play just to build up a little bit more money. And indeed, it is a quick play. Jonesy hitting some nasty shots on the opening. Basically grants warfare their ticket to number nine and so this is actually starting to look like a pretty damn even game i gotta say i like this new kind of warfare this puggy style seems to be fitting jonesy at least rather well as i've said a couple of times this series i have had the chance to play against jonesy he does that a lot he's very good at hitting his shots and uh is very frustrating to be on the receiving end of i remember one time i was uh playing overpass against him at a LAN. I was sneaking through Blue Connector, and I was just trying to peek up into park. And he was just, like, walking through. He just casually looked to his side, one-tapped me, and then kept on running through mid. Or through a party towards mid. I mean, like, he just kind of does that. He's kind of had a round there. That 2K was basically the thing that sealed up that round. There's almost no more action from there on out. Bomb was planted. Round was done, just like that. It's a little bit more money now for Warfare to work with. So now that much needed utility will be bought up for the members in question who did not have it last time. And A execute actually might be in order this time around. I like it. Mills is trying early on at least to keep a couple of those CTs over at the site here. But they're making a lot of noise as they rotate through underpass. I'm actually not a fan of it just because of that. They make a lot of noise, and the CTs are starting to change up their setup a little bit. Amen. He's going to be so ready on the angle. Jonesy, the hero of last round, has no chance this time. Mello, the hero of map number one, has no chance this time either. Two big guns down is not a very good look for Warfare if they want to make a comeback happen. But they're trying their absolute hardest, but they can't seem to succeed when it comes to winning these gunfights here. It's Mirth against four, but he's only going to be able to find one on his way to the grave. Meaning that Ryder... After a couple of initial hiccups on these past couple of rounds, we'll stabilize, make the ship start ro stop rocking, and we'll be on course to making this a swift victory for them. Again, the map pick of Ryder is treating them rather well. While Warfare are having their moments, I mean, again, I said that this map pick was going to be relatively even between the two teams. It undeniably is going the way of Ryder overwhelmingly at this point. It just kind of feels like they're trying to bandage a wound pretty much every single time. Like it, it feels like Warfare are relying a lot on these kind of counterplays and never seem like fully in the lead. Ryder Esports are just like 
the lead that they have is just like so hard to play against and I mean simply because of that fact alone right are able to at least make things even or possibly win around so speaking of which we'll even things up and uh, actually might be in a very good position to make this their round chimp completely blinded up somehow is not taken out here extending so much for this kill and it does work out eventually these are the very few times where gunfights have actually been going in their favor but it's not without its asterisks here because then they strike right back it, it, i mean this is unbelievable it happens so quickly it happens unbelievably quickly this brutalizing pace brought to warfare is just the bread and butter for rider it continues to be just so promising for them as they're now on the verge of being able to close this one out. On the verge of being able to finish up this series. This is a very important round for Warfare to win if they want to make a comeback happen. And they don't have a very promising buy to do it. I mean, again, we've seen Warfare do a lot with a little. And sometimes these quick pushes, just, I mean, these matchmaking strats, these puggy strats, they have done them well. I mean, it's just setting up for a BXQ. It's not like play default, try to find an early pick of someone who's pushing up mid, which actually, speaking of which, they are going to do. So uh, maybe I'm caught off guard. Maybe this default is actually working out to an absolute charm for them. Mills is able to find two. They're able to come up towards Cat as well. Very quick on the rotate. Smoke out through the market window. And a four on two is making this look very promising for Warfare as they will get the bomb down and force Ryder to save their guns. That is not... A sentence I think I have said much this series whatsoever. <laughs> Rider saving their guns. Wow. We are breaking new grounds, I gotta say. Another thing I gotta say is absolutely huge heads up to to Mills. Big thumbs up to him for that performance. That double kill over towards mid was I mean it it was their ticket to number ten, up to double digits. They're keeping it at least somewhat competitive versus Ryder. That's important. This is another very important round for the T's to win as well. And I mean, things are about even. The money for Ryder, I mean, they could, because they saved those two AWPs, Amen could probably drop a gun for Chimp and then Bo could uh, buy up like a FMOS or something. Oh, they're just going to do pistols around it. Wow, they want to save their money. I'm surprised. Okay. They're not even going to bother with M4s or FAMASs. They're just going to go straight up pistols. Warfare, meanwhile, will take it over towards B. This time, they don't even have that late mid rotator or anything of the sort here. They just bring it out straight raw to the site here. Raw pistol on rifle action. And, well, lucky for them here, there's only two AWPs, two heavy hitting guns on the side of Ryder. So, it most likely will be another save. And quite possibly an 11th for Warfare. Although it's a 3 versus 3, man. I just don't have the highest hopes of this retake working out. Ah, what am I saying? This is Ryder. They don't care at all. They just take it balls to the wall. That aggression is never ceasing. How could I ever forget here? It's Again, it's their style. It's how they've been playing this entire series. Who's to say they have a reason to change it up? Mills is just going to be the hero regardless of what happens. Doing a little bit of a tango around the pillar. Gorilla will find him out eventually after three kills goes the way of Mills. But the bomb will go up in flames. And the round will go the way of Warfare. Again, it's a very bloody ordeal. But it does end up leading to another T round. So that's another one that you can tick going the way of Warfare. So it's, it's something. I mean... This is kind of the point where Ryder is starting to look a little bit more nervous. They're not going for these plays just as aggressively as they have a little bit pr previously. And it's actually starting to get a little bit more punished. Warfare, they need to keep this up though. They still haven't evened the deal up. And this might not be the round that they do it as well because things are still... Within even footing, in fact, Jonesy lit up as well. It's a very tough task, but Warfare are up for the challenge. Winning these duels, it is so hard to really think of someone as getting away with a lot more than you might think. 
as it consolidates into two versus two. Chimp is able to get one onto Hydric, and Jonesy will not have to pull off a one versus two. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! It's unbelievable! Jonesy is so damn good! Thank God for four by three. Thank God. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Well, we all know what Resolution 8 plays at now. He's got to be changing it up in his Windows settings. Or not, uh, not changing it up in his Windows settings. Changing it up in his CSGO settings because... <laughs> I mean, that was by all accounts something that Jonesy should absolutely not have won. This round shouldn't be won there! What the hell? What goes on anymore? I don't even understand! This game is so stupid! It's unbelievable! <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm done, man. <laughs> it was like such a promising storyline. Warfare were finally starting to make it happen. Like crazy plays. Like, oh my God, it's actually possible. And then fucking Ryder. I'm sorry. I, I'm not supposed to curse my broadcast, but then Ryder just pulls up with pistols in the matter of like 15 seconds. It's done. Bye. Okay, we're all done. They, they're done. They want to make this 2-0. They actually might have a real decent shot at it, too. It's 4v5. What the hell is even going on anymore? It's, I mean, there's trades, yeah, but the refrags are weak. It's still the numbers game, and Ryder Esports, they're really good at it. Four versus three. One of the remaining players for Warfare is actually going to go down. I was going to say has an eagle, but this time all he has is a gravestone with his name marked on it. His teammates might join the party soon. A very minimal chance for them to actually close this one out. It's the Arizona duo again. To clutch it versus the remaining four members. One goes away of Jonesy, but I mean, look at this. Bows in basically the perfect prime spot to close it out. He gives up a kill. And now it's up to Jonesy and again a one versus two, but it's not possible. That's it. It's done. It all started with pistols and it all ends with rifles. It's a 2-0. Map number one being insanely competitive. And I got to say, Warfare had a really decent go. After, like, initially going down and looking completely lost for that entire first half, they made at least a promising run at the end of the day. But it all kind of went downhill once we saw pistols get bought up in that last round. That was a... It was a very back-and-forth series, I suppose is one way to put it. It was really enjoyable to watch, don't get me wrong. That was one of my favorite series I've seen for a good amount of time, just because of, like, how many strange and weird things went on. Tons of respect for Warfare, though, I have to say. They made it very far in this season as a team. I'm not sure actually how much they practiced, but I know they had a lot of fun with it. And Jonesy, there was a time where he wasn't even sure if he was going to be able to finish out the season with the roster, but... Hell, he finishes out this season with a bang, if nothing else. That's going to be it for me tonight, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed any of this casting whatsoever, even if I fumbled over my words a decent amount, I highly recommend you follow this channel and my Twitter. I have linked to both of them in the chat at the moment. Plus, you're on my Twitch channel. I go live pretty often with, like, advanced games and stuff. And uh, I'm just trying to become the best caster I can be. If you want to follow my journey, that would be nice. But if not, that's also understandable. I hope you guys just have a good night. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Ito, and I will see you very, very soon. Later.